<laughs> God damn it. <laughs> this is not how you start a video talks. <laughs> okay, fine. I got it. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of I don't even know what it is anymore. <laughs> If you're watching my channel, this is Warp Jester does SMP on the uh, Bar Gaming server. If you're watching Toxic, it's whatever insert intro name he gives it. But hi, hi Toxic, hi. <laughs> so uh, what's up, man? Anything exciting going on today? Uh, there's fireworks tonight. I wonder why. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it's a lovely flag, by the way. Thanks. <laughs> So this for you, for all you uh, tunes at home, in case you are uneducated in the uh, international worlds, uh, today is, is is Happy Canada Day. And why is that, Tox? It's Canada's birthday. I can't remember how many years, though. So. See, they, they, they celebrate their pseudo Independence Day because they, they were born on this day. We had to fight for ours. Lazy. <laughs> there was some fighting, too. It's been too long. Since school, so I can't remember exact all the details, but I will I will say right up front before the hate mail comes in, I have no idea about Canada's history. So just for the record, anything I say about Canada is totally factually wrong, most likely. Just so you know, kids. <laughs> so uh talks towarding some uh, new duds there, man. Yes, I am. I look at the good. Thanks. Who's your tailor? Um, the AE system. Yeah, it's a good tailor. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so uh, yeah, it's Hawks decided to celebrate uh, Canada's birthday here. It's a very lovely, uh, lovely, lovely flag. Uh, haven't had a lot of time to uh, to do much recording with Toxic, but we have been poking around quite a bit, uh, doing a lot of stuff on railways, railroads, trains, and whatnot. Um, Catch you guys up a little bit while we uh, mosey on over. Well, mosey, now we both have suits. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so a lot, of things, a lot of things have gone on, and we've been dealing with uh, two-part issues. One is, of course, as always, dealing with the little quarks and, and idiosyncrasies of servers and all kinds of weird things, including the server eating trains. <laughs> yeah. So apparently, the, the, if I understand things correctly, here talks that the server has been eating different trains. Yeah, it's, uh, two and a half trains in within the past two days have just completely disappeared. Yes, and, and sadly, one of those trains was Poochu. Rest in peace, Poochu. Rest in peace, Poochu. Anyways. <laughs> Although there is hope. I was reading today, um, somebody was saying their trains would disappear and then come back. <laughs> that could really later. that could really cause problems down the line. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Our system's not set up to have multiple trains of these identical colors. <laughs> that cause some uh train on train action real quick. <laughs> oh yeah. So I, I believe we covered this or I covered this or we covered this at some point a while ago, but to just give you guys a quick little recap here. Um the old system we moved over from the power plant, if you remember back in the day. We've got all these wonderful little turnoffs here set up. And one of the turnoffs went around the back side of the uh data center here, and that came to this uh, system a little hard to kind of make out because we've got the floor ripped up right now. But uh, we had basically three input lines that would unload any trains coming in. And then the trains would come through this little exchange right here. And they would uh, get filtered off to be refilled with whatever items they needed to have. And then um, be sent on them very little way. Um, this was meant to be a temporary solution. Just kind of have something there. It had a lot of foibles and problems, including being too short in some respects. And just... Uh, it was bad. It, <laughs> it was not. It was not good. It was bad stuff. Very bad. Very bad. Very, very, very bad. <laughs> it will be exterminated. <laughs> yeah. So we are. We are just about at the point of ripping the this stuff out. And as you can see here, there's a uh, an ugly looking thing below it, and it's ugly because we're looking at the back side of it. And of course, everybody's backside looks pretty ugly. So <laughs> um, we actually have finally finished the parkade. 
as Tox has referred to it as, uh, down below. Where'd you go, Tox? I'm taking the safe way in. <laughs> you can't oh. just walk past the trains, remember? There's, there's oh, a yeah, future dangerous. ladder going to be coming down here. A, so that a we future can... ladder, yes. <laughs> yeah, this, uh, this cabin's kind of unfinished right now. But I can't finish it because I don't have the... Uh... Oh, that's right. I have to skin it. Yeah. yeah. So this this is a really weird thing we learned about um, these carpenters' blocks. If you're the one that placed them, you're the one that can skin them. Nobody else can. So Tox has tried to, and he just kind of goes all derpy and puts a block in front of it, and that's about the end of it. So, yeah, funny thing that. So Tox, it's yeah. done. Yes. It looks and uh, pretty. We don't have any trains down here right now. Um, but the routing cable at the top of the top of the hill just outside there will bring down trains with the primary color of yellow and the primary color of lime. Because we have completely switched over to the system where primary color will identify the service and secondary color identifies the town destination that it is serving. Uh, so the first thing that trains do when they come down here is they pass... Well, first they turn off. Then they pass this. If... Uh, this has a routing table in it. Um, if the routing, if the train is primary color lime, it will come down here, pick the first available track, and unload all its items into this item unloader. So lime specifically is for item drop off. Yes. Now we also have two other trains coming down here that are um, primary color of yellow. And one of them was just leaving, um, heading out to Rurok's place uh, when we were flying up top there. Um, but when a yellow train comes in, it will pass this because it's not lime. And then all of these uh, um, thingamabobs, <laughs> routing switch motors, uh, have routing tables which identify a destination. Uh, in this particular case, it is charcoal, so... Um, the yellow trains have a golden ticket. Uh, the one that we saw from Rurik, I happen to know that one says charcoal. So that will come down here. And it will be filled by this item loader, which has a filter of charcoal. And even, I have to, if I can get in the, um, I'm not going to continue that sentence. Um, <laughs> the export bus here. <laughs> I spent too much time with these guys. <laughs> oh, oh, now he's blaming us. Oh yeah. <laughs> yes, because Tox Tox was as, as pure as driven snow <laughs> back before he joined us. <laughs> okay, maybe not quite. <laughs> but anyways, uh, the precision export bus here. Um, this is connecting to the main AE system, and. Its filter says charcoal, so charcoal will be loaded into any cart that passes over here. Now, one of the advantages to this system is uh, when, a, when a train comes in, currently we don't have trains holding at towns, just because we're trying to load up the system, kind of stress test it a bit. Make sure it can handle a heavy load of trains going back and forth. Yeah. So, when Rurik's train, uh, item train comes back, it comes down here. It's still full of charcoal because Rurik's town is actually not yet compliant. Um, he's still sorting by the old train colors and uh, none of the charcoal gets unloaded. It comes down here still full as a I don't really know what I'm going with that. <laughs> and just goes straight on by. So it doesn't need to unload everything and then reload everything. Which was a failing point of the last system we had. Again, yeah. temporary system, just for the record. Yeah. <laughs> and the other tra uh, yellow train we have come down here, by the way, uh, will load up on fertilizer for Forestry Town. Barry, were you trying to look at that? No, I'm fine. Okay. <laughs> One of the goofy things, by the way, that's happening down here when the trains come by, um, uh, these... Uh, Unloaders and loaders are emitting redstone signals, which are actually opening the trap doors. And uh, I have it set so that it 
closes on its way out, but uh, <laughs> some of these lines will still, um, because of the the red net underneath here, uh, the output line is actually the same as the default color, which puts red redstone signal on this block and this block, which is still open-ended on the train's way out. And Long story short, the chapter was act funny. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the one other thing about this, too, I think is... Uh, really neat is we've got these things broken down into segments. So you've got the unloading lines which are four lanes wide. And then you've got this section here for pickup, which is four lanes and then four lanes and then four lanes. And uh, the actual output, these four lanes come together in one line. Those four lanes come together in one line. Those four lanes come together in one line. So on. And eventually they all meet up into <gasps> four lines. <laughs> so... I th this has made things a lot easier because we did the programming for the RedNet. It was designed on a, a four-line system. And it, it was basically just what it was, was I need a means to uh, do some variables through RedNet. And one of the things about RedNet is I can do AND gates, but it only has a up to four input AND gate, which, yes, you can chain AND gates together, but for the simplicity of it, I didn't want to go any further with it. So this yeah. is what we end up with. So anyways, and this over here talks? Yeah. It's, uh, nothing operational. Oh, okay. I don't even remember what I put down there. I think I put some sort of red net color. <laughs> <laughs> um, but this is going to be a bypass if we need to pull the train off. Um, then the train can sit in here, and it's not operational at all. Uh, this is the same kind of logic if there's a train in here. It will cycle through these four holding tracks, let, letting each of them go. Mm hmm. Back up. So that is the new parkade, and uh, mm -hmm. we will, I'm sure, come in and dress up a little bit. I'm not going to put a lot of detail into it because it is meant to be kind of a service place, not a decorative place per se. Yeah. Um, but for the most it's part. It's decorative as service. Yes. Uh, but for the most part, that's pretty much done here. The cement, by the way, gives you a uh, speed boost, so when you're running around with these kind of suits on, <laughs> it acts a little funky. All yeah. right, so that that's good news, and that's really nice to see that all getting done. Mm -hmm. And here's the only train that is non-compliant with our new standards. Yes. Um, so this moves on to the next thing. The next thing is dealing with the intersections. Now, you guys have seen uh, the intersections we've done here. Try and get this logic oh. figured out was an absolute flaming pain. I'm still over by in front of the uh, data center. I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> the problem with these kind of intersections is they usually end up incorporating logic like this, which I'm not going to try to get into. No. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a There's nightmare. There's a reason I, I made this simpler and totally overlappy and almost cheaty. <laughs> it's a lot of pain. So basically, long story short is... This type of intersection is a pain in the arse, and we didn't really want to deal with it. As much as I love Railcraft and I love the little relay boxes and stuff like that, they're cool, but you can see right here, you get so much crap built up. It's just ridiculous. So we started looking into, or kind of fell back on, the uh, RedNet system. Again, this is kind of stemmed from the original RedNet system I made right over here to control these lines. And this is basically just a simple little system that would monitor and, and route trains through and all of that. So we expanded upon that and started running with it. And I'm going to go ahead and head over to or towards B's. Uh, to give you it's a, kind of an update as we're heading over there, we've actually got rails run out to the B's now finally, like officially out to the B's and everything's programmed. Um, so these guys over here that are doing B work, they've got a lot of stuff. And I mean a lot of stuff here. And they need to be able to offload that stuff. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to set up a rail service to pick up all the items. If you come down here, do, 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 and then up here, and then down here, and then down here, and then, ta-da! <laughs> <laughs> you come into yet another very familiar looking thing. Um, just like before, we've got the four lines here. Now, currently we're only using, you know, I got three of them set up here, basically, but um, we've got four lines, and we've got a bypass line, so if any trains make it down here, they shouldn't be here. So this loop Turn around. around. Um, but they're going to be picking up all the items from here. And then, just like with anything else, we've got all of this uh, area blocked out, meaning 
all the lines are monitoring, see so the little green lamps letting us know the lines are clear. And then we come out to here. Now this line that bees come off of is actually the southbound line, if you will, from the rail yard. So I'll be hanging out down south from uh, Hubtown. Uh, but before it does, there's a little split off here. And that little split off is this guy right here. This is our new intersection system. This is going to be uh, basically a uh, an idea that Seshi had regarding simpli uh, simpl simplifying intersections so we don't have cross traffic all the time. And this is a roundabout. And basically the way it works is when a train comes into the roundabout, it's going to uh, have a sensor right here triggering, letting them know that there's a train on the line coming in. And it's going to do a quick check for if the circle itself is clear and eight blocks out is clear from each direction, then it will call this area clean and it'll let the uh, thing start to cycle. Tox, do you happen to have a um, chess card I do? I have a, an entire rail bag full of them. <laughs> there you go. So the train's coming in, and this area is clear, as you can see. Each of these is starting to cycle now and clockwise. So it literally goes through and lets this one go. And then once the train has cleared the intersection, the next one will go and so on. So it's a real simple system. And this allows trains to come around um, so that they can come through the intersection. They can get uh, basically steered off in the direction they need to go. Now, in order to do that, we're actually we going to be put putting... Routing. We're going to be putting in some routing tables, some routing switches at the different uh, points here. They will have, again, those uh, color tables that Toxa standardizes on for direction and pass. So if, if it's a B color train, then when the train comes in, it's going to be turned off onto this line, head down the Bs. If it's a, uh, a southbound train, say the farm town, which we haven't started yet, then it'll actually come through here, wrap around, and then get so steered off in this direction. So again, the idea behind this is uh, a safer, easier thing to deal with in terms of the logic. Now, I say easier, and I'll, I'll, I'll say it in a little bit of a facetious tone. Uh, you can see our little, little service box here that uh, Tox created. And inside here, we've got a Redneck controller. So it's fashionable and functional. <laughs> um, I'm going to go ahead and skip over to page one here. So this give me high pass. I know I told you guys I'd do a lot more detail on this, but we don't have a lot of time left here today, but I will do some time on this at some point. But basically, we've got a timer, just a simple uh, square wave timer, and then we've got uh, all the logic for sensing if there is, uh, again, a train coming, uh, trains in the area, if they're inside the, the, the intersection, and then if that's all clear, then it goes into this what they call a pass through ring all that all that basically is it's going to sit there and just cycle through these colors now we have a setup that we don't have a fourth road it's a three-way intersection so we don't use yellow so basically it just cycles through these three colors here over and over again until all the trains are cleared out so pretty straightforward we're going to be using this for pretty much all of our intersections uh, we have there are going to be flat ground intersections if you will so that's basically it so yeah. thank you to Seshi for the brilliant idea of doing a, a roundabout. And then thank you, Tox. We spent quite a few hours on the test server yeah. trying to hammer out the uh, the details of this intersection. And then once we got into the real world, we ended up modifying it a lot further. We actually yeah. added more more logic to it and actually cut it down by a few pages. So yay! Yeah, that was kind of interesting. <laughs> Gotta love it. And one of the other things that we... Uh, uh, that we a little problem we stumbled the cotton when we were on the test server we just had four four exit roads and they're just colors yellow or orange light blue magenta and um yellow yeah i i said that right and uh and so we just had a rodent table if the locomotive is yellow yellow go out this way if the locomotive is orange orange go out this way now with this situation these will be routed by color these will be routed by color. How do you get back to Main Town? So that's why we just uh, completely cut out this track in the center here on this case, and basically any train that comes around this way will go out here. Now to be clear on that, even though we have this up right now, there may be a point in time where we have a four-way intersection where it all you'll actually have to have a full link because there are some trains that have to go wrapping around, or maybe we want to have 
maybe have uh, a train go from directly one town to another or whatever the case may be. Even at yeah. that point, it won't be a problem because if we set up a Ryan switch heading towards hub that just says, I take everything for the most part, or I take the you know, select items, you'll still be able to, to fidget and work with them. The, the real trick is as long as a train coming onto a line, say, for example, if you're coming from B's here, if you're coming onto this circle, as long as you don't make it all the way back around to here, where it would say, hey, you're a bee, come this way, <laughs> you're pretty much <laughs> yeah. good. Because then you'd be picking stuff up from bees and then bringing it back to yourself and not knowing what to do with it, trying to send it back. And then we would never get our apple jam or whatever the bees are giving us. Exactly. I don't pay attention to the bee stuff. <laughs> it's... I, I I I have too much complication in my life. I really don't need it. <laughs> so yeah, so that's that's the big news for today. We got this wonderful rounding table. Uh, I would like to revisit this and maybe jump on the test server sometime with the talks and talk a little more detail about the logic we went through. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, guys, logic like this, trying to even do a a video of this and us creating it would just be so god awful and painful it'd be ridiculous because we go back and forth about four hundred times trying to figure out well if we invert this and then invert the signal and then do this and then invert that and oh my god. And we I, don't even understand each other half the time. <laughs> I don't think we understand I don't, I don't understand myself half the time. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, it, it, it I love Red Net. I love the, the 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 redstone logic. It's just it's there are times when it's like you're trying to figure out how some of this works together. And again, you're talking about working with a couple of different mods together. So it, it becomes a challenge. But anyways, um, again, we, we, we certainly do want to get to a point where we can start doing some uh, projects with you guys and actually show you the steps and the process as we go through them. Uh, I love these tutorials on Railcraft. Now it mean talks kind of our heads wrapped around Railcraft. There are some good Railcraft tutorials out there. Um, Forecaster, I think is his name, does... Mm -hmm brilliant, brilliant uh, tutorials. But there's little tips and tricks in there that I want to add to it. And I kind of want to have a, 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 a blended railcraft with other mods type of uh, environment for us to work in. So we'll look into that at some point. In any case, we got a jam here. But I got to say, I, I am very happy with this. This is excellent. We're definitely getting a lot of things done. And, I'm, and I, I swear and I promise you, we'll show you the, the new lines we have going for uh, Magic Town and, and Mind Town soon. Um, but anyways, as always, people, thank you so very much for joining us today. And if you could, please leave a, uh, a like and a comment below if you want. Uh, it helps us out and lets us know what you're into. Um, of course, as I always say, comments are great on YouTube. Uh, however, if you want to have a, a, a conversation with us or kind of keep up with what's going on with us, I definitely recommend that you guys head over to BottleRocketGaming.com and go ahead and sign up on our website. All ages are welcome for signing up on the website. And we certainly do love the company and love the copy and conversation so feel free to kind of hang out over there and then likewise as always if you are interested in a modded minecraft experience and you want to join us please feel free to hop on over to again our wonderful website slash forums and you can sign up there and then request whitelist uh, access to the server we are stringent we are pretty strict about it um but that said Go ahead and apply. We'll get a chance to talk with you. And if you're a good fit for us and we're a good fit for you, we'll go ahead and have you on. You can come play with us. So that's it for now. I'm Jester. I'm Toxic. And we are going to bed. Yeah. <laughs> Bye! Bye. Have a good life. <laughs>